Greetings, viewers, and welcome to our Sage 200 Service Manager Transaction Processing Webinar. Today's webinar will include the following. An introduction to processing, service tasks and requests, processing of parts entries, technician times, purchase orders, credit notes, inquiries, and reports within Service Manager. Now, Service Manager really is based on two platforms. Firstly, is there's the setup and configuration, and then we have the processing of transactions. Now, it's very important that the setup and configuration is done correctly in order to ensure that the, that the transactions are processed well, and also that you are able to integrate into your Sage 200 Evolution database. We have a separate webinar which, which deals with the setup and configuration, and this can be viewed on our visual platforms. Right, let's get started. Now, there is really a sequence that is involved with Service Manager. Firstly, it's a case of creating a service asset, then generating a service request, opening of a service task, the scheduling of a service task, capturing of parts entry, the capturing of technician times, and processing a PO if relevant. It's a case of completing the service task and processing the service task once a physical job has been completed. Now, one of the important factors within the module is the creating of a service asset. Now, if you think in, for example, Sage Trend Devolution, you've got master file records for suppliers, for customers, for inventory items, etc. And a service asset really is a master file record for a service asset. So if I go into my service assets and I've created a few service assets, if I go into one of those assets, you see that it really is a master file record. It's got its own individual code, it's relevant information there, details about the class, make, model of the asset, etc. And then who is the customer who has purchased this particular asset or is using it at their premises. Now, you see that there's various tabs on the service asset and these relate to relevant information. So for example, um, details about the date and supplier, when was the asset purchased? Whom was it purchased from? The service history of the asset, uh, any sort of spare parts used, technician times. So every time there's an interaction on a particular asset, this information gets stored on the individual service asset record. Right, so once we've created our service assets, we can then go process a service request. Now, a service request really is the first interaction between the customer and the asset when they request the asset to be repaired or some form of maintenance being done. And I'm then gonna go open up a service request. And we then need to go link the service request to a service asset. And it then gives me details of the customer who's linked to that service asset, the relevant details from the master file, for example, the model, class, and make, and the technician that's been assigned to go and maintain that asset. Um, we also got, we can insert dates, for example, details about the start date of the maintenance, the end date, uh, the completion date, etc., and any other relevant information. For example, service history. And any other relevant documents about that asset. Now, very importantly, we've got the description section we need to go insert details about firstly what the problem is with the asset and then also the relevant maintenance or repair work that needs to be taken. So in this case I'm going to specify 
the work that needs to be done. <coughs> right, so I've got all the details there. And if I save this, I can now go print The service call report is going to give me details about the service request, <coughs> the date and the time logged, who the customer is, the work that needs to be done, details about the asset and the technician, and other relevant information. So <coughs> this service call report will then be handed to the technician. He will then go out and repair the item or actually repair the item in-house in the company's workshop. So it's very important that all the relevant details about what needs to be done are included on your service call report. And this is really the first sort of uh, source document that's going to be relating to this whole process. Right, so I can close that. And then we can move on to the service task. Now, I'm going to go to my service task and just refresh the screen. And I've then got my service task there. Right, so I've got my details there. It tells me who the customer is, the service request number, and all the relevant details. And I've got details about any other documents. So there's my date tab where I can specify, once again, the start and end date, completion date, etc. And any other warnings or documents that may be relevant to this particular service task. Right. <clears throat> now, one of the interesting things about a service request is that I can add images. Now, initially, when I go create a service asset, I can add an image there, which is just a way to easily identify the asset. Um, for example, when the asset was manufactured, uh, when it was sold, et cetera, to the customer. So I've got details about the initial um, sale of the asset, et cetera. However, I can also include specific images of the asset on the service task. Now, a good example when I would need this is, for example, maybe in a panel beating business or an auto body repair shop, where um, a vehicle arrives, it may be damaged, and then I can certainly take or attach those images onto the service task and then determine exactly at the state of the damage of that particular vehicle before the job commenced. Right, so initially we've got an image for service asset, and also we can have images for relevant service tasks. Now, when adding details onto a service task, we can do it into four options. There's the stock, adding parts, GL, AP, as well as technician times. So I'm going to just say, for example, um, we're going to, we've assessed the damage of this particular asset or what needs to be done. And based on that information, we can then go allocate spare parts that are going to be used in this repair process. I'll use the stock module. And I can then go and specify which stock items or spare parts I'm going to be needing for this process. Now, these spare parts or stock items are integrating into your Sage 200 inventory database, and I can pick up the items from there. So I'm going to specify the item code, the quantity that I'm going to be needing, and the information there. Now, you'll notice is that we've got a confirmed quantity. So I can say um, I've issued two items and I'm going to confirm those two. And I can then just add the additional stock items that I'm going to be using to repair this item. So there we go. And I can confirm those quantities. Now, I'm just going to add an additional stock item here.
So what you notice is that I've also got the a, a confirm all button. So I can, for example, add a whole range of items and then I can confirm all the quantities on all the lines by using the confirm all option. So now that I've added all my spare parts or stock items, I can also add the technician times, which is just the number of hours or labor hours that are going to be used by the technician to complete this repair job. So the model is going to be technician. Um, I'm then going to go specify the technician who's going to be working on this job. And then also a work code. And that's going to be the quantity is going to be the number of hours or time spent. Confirm that. And then obviously we've got a rate. Remember is that we are able to link a technician to a service task. However, it could be a case that other technicians may also need to work on this task. And you can certainly add the information there. Right. So it's as simple as that. I can then simply go and save. Print the picking slip if I need to go pick the parts or spare parts that I'm going to be using in this process. And I'm good to go. So I'm just going to close the service task for a minute. And then remember is that what we're doing here is we're saying there's one service task and we are now allocating parts technician times to one specific service task. However, we do have a couple of shortcuts within the application that allows us to allocate parts and technician times and even invoice multiple transactions simultaneously. Under transactions, there's a parts entry feature. Now, if I open up that, this screen allows me to allocate parts to multiple service tasks from one centralized location. So if you think, for example, a scenario where you maybe have somebody working in the parts or the stores division, and their predominant role would be then to just allocate parts to the various service tasks. So they can do this from one particular screen without them having to open up the service task screen, locating the relevant tasks and allocating those tasks or parts one by one. So I'm going to go to my service task. Let's go refresh the screen for a minute. Right, there we go. And once again, I can specify the stock item, the quantity to be used, and I've got the pricing, etc. And I can, once again, if I need to, from the screen, I can simply go find another service task and allocate those parts from this one centralized location. Right, let's just go and Right, so I think we're good to go then. And that's all sorted. I'm going to go save the parts entry. I can print that picking slip if I need to at this point. And then if I revert back to my service task, you'll see that I've now got those two additional items available. Right, quick and simple to do. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to go show, we're going to go look at the second shortcut, which is technician times. So once again, a centralized screen where perhaps, for example, you've got somebody whose task is to capture, for example, the labor hours for that were spent on repair jobs. They can do this from one centralized location. So either do it by service task or by name. So I'm going to say, there we go. That's the technician. Uh, their start time was that. Let's just say, for example, um, and it ended an hour later. Link it to that service task. Let's refresh the screen. And we'll pick up the service task that was 
the job with the hours were spent on. And we then going to specify work code. In this case, it was overtime and the total number of units, etc. Right, so we can simply say save to that. And what you will notice is that there is a charge time available. So it is possible that maybe, for example, um, maybe two hours were worked in a specific job. However, only one hour is chargeable. Could be, a, for example, maybe a guarantee or warranty that we're only going to be charging for a certain number of hours, not the full time spent on the particular job. It's going to go save. Uh, let's just add an additional one here. And we'll say, right, so I'm going to save that. And if I then go back to my service task, open it, you'll see that I've now got those additional work technician times, which have been allocated to that service task from the centralized screen. Right, so now that we've added all the information and the physical job has been completed, we can then go close the service task. So I'm first going to go to status and say it has been closed. The resolution code is completed, task completed. And I'm going to say process. So at this particular time, I'm now going to invoice the customer seeing as the job has been completed. I'll close the service request. And I can then go and print the invoice. Right, there's my invoice, details about the customer. Uh, there's my service task information, the invoice number, and all the spare parts that were used on this repair process, as well as any form of technician times or labor costs that were allocated details about what was done on the job and the total, etc. Right, so that's been completed. Now let's just go and check what has happened in our Sage Tuned Evolution database. Right, so I'm going to open up that and I'm just going to go find the customer, inquire. And there we go. So if I there's my transaction. I'm just going to go right and click, say source. And there we go. There's our invoice. So now it's quite simple is that, as you can see, there's really two sort of platforms here. We've got the service manager where the actual information is being captured, as well as the physical job being done. And then almost like a back office where that information is then being integrated back into our Sage and Evolution database. So I can simply now go and email the customer the invoice, or reprint for them, or even do an inquiry on exactly what was uh, used or the relevant information on a specific service task request. Right, let's just go back into Service Manager. And as I mentioned previously is that the service asset is really the master file. So I'm going to go back into the service asset and we're going to go check a couple of things. So if I open up this asset, which is where the repair was done and edit it, and I'm going to go to service history. So as you can see there, it's kept a record of exactly the invoice, etc., the images, if there were any, and obviously the amount of that particular service task. We've got details about the spare parts that were used. Okay, so far, and also the technician times that were used for this asset with the relevant dates, etc. So as you can see, any sort of interaction that was processed within the module on a particular service asset is being stored here. So really a centralized location where you can go check up on all the history about a specific service asset that was processed, et cetera. 
Right, let's just go through to our second option now. Now I'm going to go open up a new service request. And Right, so once again, I've got the details there, and I'm going to say, for example, um, right, so once again, opening up a new service request, and I'm good to go. I can say save it. I'm going to go print the service call reports so the technician knows exactly the work that needs to be carried out, as well as the asset information, etc. And we're good to go. Right, so it's back into service task. Now, it's going to refresh that. And there's our service task. Now, you'll notice is that there's two very important options there. There's an option to load template. So it may be that perhaps in your environment, you have service assets that perhaps they have got routine maintenance and that, I mean, it's a uniform selection of parts, a uniform number of hours used. So you can certainly go and create a template for those particular types of jobs. And when a particular job comes in to the workshop, you can simply go load the template onto the request and you're good to go. So I'm going to say load template. And I've got my template number there together with all the relevant information selected. And it just tells me this is particular item that's used on this particular template. And then I could certainly go and add to the template, for example, the number of hours that a technician would take, etc. So I've got the details here, and I can then, once I've saved this, I can also, there's also an option to use print quotation. So for example, um, the asset may have been received at the organization. Um, they've then seen exactly what needs to be done. And then they can, at this particular point, detail all the spare parts that are going to be needed, as well as the technician time or the labor hours, and then do a print quotation, which they can then give to the customer. And the customer will then determine if they want to proceed with the repair job or not. So I've got my quotation there uh, with all relevant information. And once it's been accepted, I can then continue with the job. So. Right, so at this particular point, I'm going to add in some additional stock items. Right, so I'm going to say save that, and put this, no, let's just add some technician times there. Right, and we're good to go. I'm going to say save that. And very often you may have instances where you have a stock item, but you don't keep quantities and they you specifically keep them for certain jobs. So it's possible that you may need to, for a specific job, buy items from a supplier specific to the job. So there's an option which allows you to go do a purchase order and link that to a service task. Under transactions, we've got the purchase order option. And I'm going to open up that. And at this particular point, I can select the supplier and the stock item that I'm going to be needing. So um, this is an ins instance where I'm going to be needing a specific stock item from a supplier. So I'm going to select it. 
and specify my service task. And the quantity that I'm going to be needing. Now, what you notice here is that once again, it's a shortcut screen which allows me to go and process purchase orders from one supplier for multiple service tasks from one centralized location. So, a quick and easy way to go and order stock items for multiple service tasks on one screen. Right, so I've got the details there and I can simply say place the order. I've got my order number, which comes from my automatic numbering within Sage 200. And if I revert back to my service task, you'll see that I now have this particular item, zero quantity confirmed, as it's simply awaiting for the stock to arrive. Now I'm going to revert back to my evolution database. And I'm now going to go process the unprocessed order. At this time, the order is still set as unprocessed. And when the stock arrives, I'm going to process a GRB supply invoice, bring in that stock and allocate that to my service task. Open. And I can then go find the unprocessed PO. Right, there we have it. And let's just say, confirm that I received the two. And process the invoice. Here we have a normal supply invoice, etc. If I now revert back to my service manager, you see that open up the service task, and we've now got the stock item which was processed on the PO, and we see the quantity has been confirmed due to the fact that we have now processed the supply invoice GRV for those two items. Right, so I'm going to save that. And so at this time, we now said the physical work has been completed and I'm ready to invoice the actual service task. So I need to specify the work assign has been set to close. Resolution code is now completed. The task has been completed. And I can say close. However, we now have also the ability, a shortcut screen which allows us to go and invoice multiple closed service task requests simultaneously. So I'm going to say close. And you'll see under transactions, we've got the option that says invoice service task. So I'm just going to refresh the screen. And let's just see why it doesn't, let's just go back to service tasks. Uh, let's just, didn't say, just say, okay, just save that, completed. Status is now closed. And we can say save. Right, so it's saved those options and let's just go back into transactions. We've got the invoice service task option and we refresh the screen. There we have it. So now I've got my service task number, which the status is now set to close, awaiting to be invoiced. And at this particular point, we can just say we want to invoice these tasks and we're then able to invoice them simultaneously from one centralized location. So instead of going now to open up the service task, going to then uh, invoice it in the process option, I can do it simultaneously from here. So I'm going to say select that option and I can say process invoice.
and I can print the service task document, no problem. Right, there's my details, and then got information about the items that were used, technician times, etc., and I'm good to go. Right, now, it's very possible that you may need to credit note or perhaps pass a credit on a certain service task, invoice service task. And this really can be dealt with in two separate ways. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to go through to our service task. And as you can see, we've got a couple of closed ones there. Now, under transactions, there's a credit notes option, which I'm going to open. And I can simply say add. And I now need to go link the credit note to a certain service task. On the drop down, I'm going to go find the one. Let's just go find that one. Now, very importantly, it's going to ask me, do I want to load the document as a linked document? I'm going to say yes. And it brings through all the lines or the transaction lines from that service task. And now I can simply say save and process the credit note. Now, it's very important to be aware that if I load the document as linked, it's as if I'm going to say I'm crediting the whole document, which means that I'm going to credit the full amount of that particular invoice. So say save, and I can then say process. Right, there's my credit note. In this instance, we've credited the full service task invoice. Right, so I'm going to close that. And we can then go see what has happened in Sage 200. If I then go to the customer, inquire. Right, then as you can see, I've got my initial invoice. And then there I've got my credit note. Right click, I can do a source. And there's a credit note with all the relevant information there. So once again, the people in the finance department or in the back office can see exactly what the credit note was for and reprint or email this invoice to the customer, et cetera, if they need to. Right, that's the first option we've got to credit notes. But now let's just go back and see the second feature. Right, so I'm simply going to go back to my service task or service request. Let's just go open up a new one. Add. Right, I've got the details there. Right, there's my service call report. <clears throat> and now it's back to our service task. Right, so this particular point, it's a service task, and I'm just going to go add some stock items there. and a technician's time. Right, so this particular time, everything's in order. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to say process. So we've invoiced 
I'll just go change that status there. Close and resolution code is going to be completed. Save that. And I can then go process. Right, so this particular point, there's my invoice as per normal with all the stock items and the labor costs. And now remember is that we now need to go, for example, there may be an error on the invoice and we now need to go do a credit note. Now in this instance, we only, we're only going to be crediting a certain portion of the invoice. Okay, back to transactions, credit notes. And I'm going to add link it to our service task there we go and now very importantly remember is that we're only going to be crediting a certain portion of the invoice so the option we must say no do not load the document as link document there we go and now at this particular point we can then go to the confirm quantity change that And we can then go say we're only going to right. And then at this point, save. And I can say process. So I've only I've only gone to go and credit a certain portion of the invoice. Process. Right. So as you can see, it's giving me details of the line items and only the portion that's been credited on those items. Right, so I'm good to go. Credit note, close, and just go through to our evolution database, inquire on the customer's account, and as you can see, there's the initial invoice to get the credit note for a portion of it. So, all we just remember is that the differences between credit notes is we are going to either have a linked or load as linked, which means that if it's yes, that the whole the whole invoice is going to be credited, and just use a no option if you're only going to be crediting a certain portion of that credit note or that invoice. Right, and we can say close. Right, let's just go on to the inquiries option. So if I go to my inquiries, you see we can obviously inquire on things like serialized numbers, we can inquire on service assets. So if I go to my service asset option there, select an asset, and I can then view details about the service history, uh, the parts that were used, the billing, notes, etc. So as you can see, in the same way that we can do inquiries in various models within Sage 200, we can also inquire on service assets, as in this particular instance, service assets or the master file records. And then obviously we can inquire on things like error codes, meter warnings, notes, etc. If you look at the various reports, there really is a whole range of reports that are available within Service Manager. And these reports can be customized as per usual, together with obviously it's a case of just copying the original report and then customizing a copy of that layout. So you've got details about, for example, you know, the assets, reports, etc. Uh, details about any contracts that you may have with your customers for maintenance, etc. And then details about the actual technician time spent on service tasks, et cetera. Now, um, if you look at, for example, the one that says awaiting parts, it really is a very useful report simply because if you awaiting parts, it means that your whole process is at a standstill and it can only continue once you receive those parts. It's always good to really just check up on this particular report to see exactly which um, repair jobs are at a standstill, et cetera. Then um, we've also got details about, for example, the uninvoiced revenue, which just means is that you've got service tasks which have been completed but have yet to be invoiced, okay? very importantly. So obviously make sure that you 
invoice those service tasks as soon as possible so that you don't have uninvoiced revenue within your module. And we've also got a very useful working progress report that's going to give you details about which service jobs are still in progress, which means that either awaiting parts or perhaps they're still in progress. And obviously, you can ensure that um, know exactly what work is in progress, et cetera, at any particular point in time. Now, just something which is quite useful is that um, if I go back to a service task and at one of them, you'll see that there is a feature or a status which is called uh, a resolution code, rather, which is called cancel, which means the task has been cancelled. So it could be for whatever reason. Um, however, we do have a report which is called cancelled service calls. Now, it's very important that you keep track on this particular report, simply because uh, if you've got a large amount of cancelled service calls, you might, be, you might want to investigate why so many service calls have been cancelled and obviously determine exactly what the reason is for those. So as you can see, there's a large variety of reports available from details about your service assets, et cetera, contract information, et cetera, as well as details about the technician activities. So for example, you can see the daily activities of technicians, uh, the amount of time they spend per service request, et cetera. And also very importantly is how much revenue did the technician generate for the organization? So as you can see, a whole range of reports that you can certainly make use of and obviously can be monitored to determine exactly how the process is going within your service manager module. And I'm just going to go back to our service assets. And once again, just to show you that every, for example, every interaction that gets used with a particular asset is then stored on the your service asset. So it's really quick and easy to see details about the service history, the technician times, any spare parts used, et cetera, from one centralized location. So as you can see, Service Manager really is the ideal module for any organization that carries out maintenance, repair jobs, et cetera. It allows the organization to keep strict tabs on exactly the parts that were used, uh, build up a service history of a particular asset, as well as determine exactly how many labor hours were spent in the whole uh, repair and maintenance process. I do hope that this webinar has been useful. Thank you so much for watching. It's overnight for me and goodbye.